Peace. In Christ. Peace. In Christ. I would like to thank God for this moment in my life. Amen. I want to thank my family, my friends, and loved ones for their support and prayers. I would like to thank Reverend Obaji and Reverend Kennedy for their leadership. I would like to thank Patricia and Daniel Yarte for setting the example. And I want to thank Y-A-G. I want to thank Y-A-G for their continued support and prayers. And I want to thank everyone here. Thank you all in advance for your prayers and your support. Please pray with me and for me as we prepare to hear the word. Sermon titled, Too Faithful. Let us pray. Awesome God, we thank you for this day. As I stand here today, Lord, I am an empty vessel. Father God, I am asking to be filled with your grace and your anointing. I ask that you open my mouth and bless me with the boldness to proclaim your word, Lord. For I, for I am not worthy, Lord, yet you have chosen me for this assignment. May the Holy Spirit fill this place and take absolute control. May this message be a blessing to all who prepare to hear and receive. In your gracious name, Father God, I pray. Amen. Today's sermon title is called, Too Faithful, Too Faithful. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines the word faithful as steadfast in affection or allegiance, firm in adherence to promises. This is a word we often hear and use, but have we taken the time to really understand its full meaning? As believers, we can all recall the time where we experience faithfulness, to be specific, God's faithfulness. It is very important that we understand the meaning of the word faithful. We are so blessed in this church to have so many faithful servants who contribute to the growth and development of the church. Some examples of the faithful servants include the clergy, Ebo and the media team, the Yartes, the Ansas, Mr. Harrison and the music ministry, the prayer and praise team, women and men's fellowship, various committees, and of course my favorite, YAG, just to name a few. <laughs> Even with all these amazing examples, there are many times I have been weak in my walk with God. Times that I fled from the word, or quite frankly, gave myself excuses as to why I could not be a, safe, uh, a servant. In those moments, I told myself that God simply would understand how tired I was and would not hold it against me. Can you imagine what God said when I said that? But even in those moments, God's faithfulness never left me. As Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 23 says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Because we are reminded of God's love, we are not consumed by our trials and tribulations. For his compassions indeed never fail. We are blessed to see new mercies every morning. His faithfulness is indeed great. His promises never fail. He is a faithful God who only seeks for us to be faithful servants. The question I ask myself is, have I been faithful? I know my answer. Now that I have asked myself, have you been faithful? Don't worry, it's not a test, you can answer. I'll give you a passing grade. <laughs> Have you been faithful in your walk with God? And what are some ways that we can be more faithful? As people of God, we have to have a heart filled with gratitude for all that God has done for us. Maintaining a heart of gratitude 
helps us realize his faithfulness and that his steadfast love for us is unwavering. As often as we sin and fail God, he is still faithful. Amen. He is still faithful. Amen. Yes, yes. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. All he seeks from us is for us to plead to him and to be faithful. We all fall short of being faithful. However, in moments where we fall short, how do we find our way back to being faithful? I stand here today, not because I am perfect. Along the way, I have disappointed God, and it still amazes me how faithful he has been in my life. Amen? Amen. He still finds me deserving of his grace and his faithfulness. If this isn't the definition of faithful, I don't know what is. There has never been a promise God has made that he didn't keep. As Numbers chapter 20, 23, verse 19 says, God is not human that he should lie. Not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I remember during the pandemic, the extreme anxiety I began to feel as we were all watching the news and the increasingly high number of people losing their lives each and every day from COVID-19. During this time, I must admit, even as a Christian, I was afraid. I did not know how to feel, and most times I felt conflicted. I continued to pray over my family and loved ones and all the people God handpicked to help patients during this time. In the midst of this, there were people who saw the hand of God at work. Amen? Amen. People who prayed like never before. Non-believers became believers. And those like me, who urged to strengthen my relationship with God, did so. It is truly amazing how God works. Again, his faithfulness is beyond understanding. We serve a compassionate God who is faithful in all ways. As I pray during this pandemic, I ask God to use me this year. I ask God to protect my loved ones. I prayed for his strength in moments when I felt weak. And during this time, where all seemed gloomy and fearful, God was still faithful. While many people were able to strengthen their relationships with God, others endured great loss. A large population lost their jobs loved ones, and found themselves in unbearable situations that made them lose hope and left them without much faith. I was faced with a challenge of my own. By the grace of God, I was able to safely deliver my daughter Nyla right before the pandemic began in February of 2020. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and was able to be home during the, the early part of the pandemic due to maternity leave, thank you. <laughs> oh, that was good timing, I tell you, thank you, God. <laughs> I returned back to work in June, and as you can imagine, my anxiety was at an all-time high because I would walk into the hospital and they would give us like new statistics and protocols that you know hospital employees had to adhere to. During my first week back, I began to experience sharp pain sharp abdominal pain. I paid no attention to the pain and pushed through and continued to work. Friday of that week, the pain became unbearable. It was worse than childbirth, I'm telling you. <laughs> and during this time, a coworker noticed that I was in severe pain and walked me down to the emergency. This is when working in a hospital comes in handy. Immediately, I began to panic at the thought of not being able to go home or that they would find an issue somewhere and would have to admit me. I even began thinking about the soup I made the night before. 
and how sad I was about not the, the, the thought of not even being able to eat it and leaving it for hu my husband to eat it alone. <laughs> and it was chicken soup too, my favorite. <laughs> so you can all imagine my pain and heartbreak. Ultimately, after a few hours, I realized that it was a bigger issue than I had anticipated. After a number of exams, the doctor told me that I would be rushed for an emergency surgery. No, we don't like the word surgery. They would have to remove my gallbladder right away. In that very moment, I asked God why. So many questions came to mind. I didn't understand why at the time. However, I had nothing left to do but to pray. All of this happened within hours. I prayed, and luckily for me, the surgeon prayed with me. It was at that moment that I knew God was present. The surgeon prayed over the entire room before I went to bed. After a few hours, I woke up around 12 a.m. on June 12, which is my birthday. Can someone scream, faithful God? Faithful God! Can someone say, faithful God? Faithful God! I first touched my head to make sure my wig was still on. <laughs> I had braids under this, but I, I wanted to look presentable. <laughs> and um, I touched my hands and legs, and immediately filled, I was filled with joy. God gave me the gift of life. Amen. He allowed me to enter that birthday healed and well. Of course, I had to take a picture so I could refer to that experience. I was able to stand and walk. Amen. Although I was in so much pain, I had to give God the praise because he kept his promise to me. Amen. Can someone say covenant keeping God? Covenant I said covenant keeping God. Covenant keeping God. Amen. Now I know some of you are probably still wondering about that soup I left at home. I wasn't able to eat the fufu, but I sure drank the soup like I was drinking water, okay? While this was my experience, there are people who have lost all hope and faith in God. There are people who contracted COVID, those who did not die from this virus, but lived to tell the story. Some who overcame this found their faith through all of this. Others completely feel God failed them and question why. God allowed this to happen to them. But to those who feel completely abandoned by God, who feel he has failed on his promise, rest assured that your survival is the very example of God's faithfulness. Your survival is the very example of God's faithfulness. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 says, no weapon forged against you will prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. This is a promise of God's faithfulness to you. Many lives have been lost due to this pandemic, but he kept you. We are no different than those who have passed away, yet he kept us. Those who have lost jobs, who are left to think about how they will pay the rents, feed their families. God is working it all out for your good. Yes. It may feel like you have been waiting a lifetime, but just know that what God cannot do does not exist. He will see you through any anxiety, fear, brokenness that you may be experiencing and use you as an example one day. Your prayers will be answered. I have been blessed to see and experience the goodness of God and can boldly say this because even during the times I questioned him and was faced with other hardships, he still kept me and loved me and remained a faithful God. Amen. Psalms 91 verse 4 says, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings will you find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. This is his promise to us. Do you feel God has been unfaithful to you? Are you feeling disappointed in God? 
Are you holding a grudge against God? Have you lost all hope that God even exists? Do you find yourself asking yourself, why me? Have you applied for a number of jobs and still haven't received a call back? Have you been praying for healing that hasn't taken place yet? Have you lost a loved one that made you lose all faith and hope in God? It is easy to say that God hasn't been faithful to you because a prayer has yet to be answered yet. However, we need to understand that God's timing is simply impeccable. He is always on time. He is always the first and not the last. The beginning and not, okay. He is a faithful God, a covenant keeping God. Whatever you are going through, you can still have faith. It's never too late. Remember that faithfulness to God requires your obedience, even when it is difficult. Again, faithfulness to God requires your obedience, even when it is difficult. There is a quote that says, I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know how it's coming. I just know it's coming because God said it's coming. Simply believe that God is at work. As the words from the song says, you are too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize that you're too faithful to fail me. May this song be on your heart today and every day. In moments where you feel you can't hold on, may these words bring you comfort and give you the strength to have faith and know that God is faithful, too faithful, amen? <laughs>